Okay, so I'm back and I'm now at my sitting down place because I'm going to stitch and I'm not very happy stitching standing up. Um, so I've had a little think about how I want to, because it's now glued but you know it's all separate everywhere, and what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to blanket stitch along the two long sides together, the blanket and the cover together and then along this edge where there's the lovely fraying I'm going to not blanket stitch I'm just going to um, blanket stitch the blanket part separately and then stitch that to the cover and here's my little twisty tie that I'm going to attach actually it used to be a tie off a gardening penny that I had that finally fell completely apart and um, I cut it apart and took the nice bits off it and made it into another penny. Anyway, this was the waist tie, so I'm going to reuse this. So before I sew that together, I'm going to trap that in there. Um, and then at the other end, the other short end, this end, I could just blanket stitch along and call that done, but what I thought I'd do is I got this lovely little piece of eco print that's just too lovely to cut up. I thought if I stitched it like that there and like that there, you see that? Um, and down there and down there, then it will serve as a kind of little pocket inside the front cover. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, <clears throat> and that's probably going to take me quite a long while so I don't know if I'm going to do some and pause or maybe I'm just going to make this whole video part two and then you can watch it all or not um, we'll see we'll see so I think I'm going to use this lovely silk thread that a friend of mine gave me a big huge cone of a long time ago and this is the last bit that I've got for the blanket stitch I'm going to go to needle. Where's my needle? What I do want. Where's that one indeed? Looks a bit big, but we'll see how we go. At least I can thread it. Get some thread. Get some thread. Oops. These scissors are not very good. Okay. <clears throat> tie a knot and where to start, where to start, where to start I think I might start with the blanket without the cover attached along this edge so to do blanket stitch I'm going to come through from the back about an eighth of an inch from the edge and then you kind of make a eye. I don't know if there's other ways of doing it, but I kind of make a false stitch to begin with by just going over on the spot like that. And then I go back in and come up behind that stitch. You see that? And then I start my blanket stitching. So I come through from the back and then I get my loop of thread and pull it up. And I'm going to do that all the way along to the other side. Just kind of trying to make sure that the little cross strand lays on the edge. I'm not pulling it too tight, but pulling it just snug. I said earlier it was windy, well it's now raining as well and cold. It's not very nice outside. I'm happy to be inside in the warm. Stitching away, stitching away. I'm not gluing anymore. <laughs> I don't know, it makes me a bit panicky to do gluing. I don't know why, I guess it's because I don't do very much of it. Stitching, I feel, you know, completely in control of. I know what I'm doing, mostly. But when you start doing things that are, like they say these days, outside your comfort zone, it's a little bit panicky. Even if you're not watching me, even if I'm here on my own, I can dither about for hours with a pot of glue before I actually commit to 
putting it on the thing. In fact, you all watching me made me just do it and get on with it. So that was good. This blanket is lovely. This, it was a Woolsey blanket. It was cream all over and it had um, a blue band along one edge. And then it had the satin binding all around. And it was a Woolsey, it had its label on. And in one place, which is in my old trunk where I keep all my big chunky bits of blanket and sheets and things, in one place on it was a darn. And when I unfolded it when I got home, because I didn't want to unfold it and, you know, carpet the whole shop with it. And I found this darn. Some people would have been, oh no, I've just bought this blanket and it's got a blooming great darn in the middle of it. I was, oh look, there's a darn. And I'm, I'm cutting all around that bit, I'm saving that bit, I don't know what for. In fact, I've got another little project here, a little thing that I made. I can, I'll show you at one point. Um, a couple of years ago, as a friend of a friend bought a house here in France, and um, in the house was an old, I guess it was the linen cupboard. And it was absolutely stuffed to bursting with old sheets. And all musty, the house had been empty for a long time. And some of them were still good and could be laundered and used, and that's what she did, I imagine. But a lot of them were, through must and age, discoloured and, you know, you wouldn't want to put them on your bed anymore kind of thing. So she, um, so the friend of the friend, who's my friend, if you see what I mean, said, well, you know, go and see her because she's looking for a home for them and I've said you might be interested. So I went round there with a bottle of wine and a box of chocolates and came away with a boot full of all this treasure. And on a lot of them, were all different kinds of men's and darns. There were some even, you know, sort of really old but, but machine darning, and there were some hand darning. And there were some that were really beautifully, finely darned. It was a work of art. And some were really, <clears throat> sorry, what my grandmother would have called a botch job. And a lot of the sheets were turned. You know, do you know about turning sheets? I'm sure you know about turning sheets. My grandmother used to do it in the days when we had flat sheets instead of fitted sheets. Um, they would wear in the middle, so they would cut them up the middle and then turn the outsides to the inside and then sew them back together with a French seam, also called a feld seam, where you turn a double seam so there's no raw edge. And I do always remember staying at my grandmother's when I was a child and lying in bed and running my toe along the seam as I was going to sleep. Anyway, all these lovely sheets that I was given, well, lovely as, you know, a matter of perspective. I thought they were lovely. And all the darns they had in them, I went through them all because I knew I was going to be cutting them up, tearing them up, using the cloth, dyeing it, eco-printing it, whatever. But I wanted to save all the darns. So I um, went through them and cut out all the areas which had a darn or a mend of some kind. And I had this big stack at the end of it of all different kinds of sheets, mostly cotton, some linen, some what in France is called metis, which is cotton and linen blend. And I thought, well, what am I going to do with them? So <clears throat> I patched them all together into um, a long, long piece and I, I put them on a scroll. I've got it here, I'll show you one day, if you'd like to see, you know, if you're interested to see a load of old darn sheets on a on a scroll. But I felt it was important to honour the, the women, I assume they were women, that had, had mended. Because mending is a little bit of lost art. And I'm nearly to the end of that edge with my story of my sheets and my darns. Again, it's back to what I say, said in my slow stitch video, my introduction to slow stitch video. It's about honouring materials, you know. That's not an infinite supply. We need to look after things. Okay, so that's my. Do you see my little row of blanket stitch? Do I need to bring it up closer to you? Do you see? So now I want to carry on doing my blanket stitch, um, but I want to go along that edge. So I'll drop that down there a minute and turn it round. 
Now this might get a little bit awkward when I get up near the pages. Um, gosh, it's really blowing a hooli out there. I think I might put some pins in. Just to keep it all where it should be. Because because you're folding, you're and you're folding two different layers together, it can you know, they won't necessarily stay together until they're stitched and then they won't have any choice. So when that's important to know that. If you're, if you do this and then you you fold your book up and you say, "Oh, my blanket's way too big," and then you cut some off, be careful because I'll show you what I mean. If I fold this up now, where it's not pinned, you see that's sticking out there. You might cut that off. But when then you lay it flat, whoops, when you lay it down flat, you see it's the right length, and it's because of the fold. When you fold like that, that's having to do less travel than the outer. So it sticks out. Just be, you know, don't trim things. There's a saying, measure twice, cut once. Or measure 500 times, I do sometimes. I'm not sure I can get a pin in there. I might just have to sort that out when I come to it. Put some pins along here. Of these teeny tiny pins. Which I use even when it's not necessary to use teeny tiny pins. I just, I just like them. I just find they're more polite than the big pins. A little self-effacing. And you keep getting my big chunky jumper coming into shot. Well, I have got the heating on in here, but it's not hugely warm. I should get the rest of the blanket out and wrap it around me. And so that's that side. I think I'm just going to sew along that side before I do any more pins. I'm just going to bob up and make sure I'm, st yes, I'm still in the frame. <clears throat> so now I'm going to turn the corner. And how I do that is I come up in the same hole with, as the last stitch there. And pick up the loop. And get try and get that right on the corner as best I can. And I'm going to marry it up. Well, it's a bit different because I wasn't, you know, I'm now going to go through an extra layer. So now I'm going to come over. Oh, how am I going to do it? <laughs> this is me thinking on the hoof again. I'm going to take a sly little stitch inside there that nobody needs to know about, I think. Just to anchor it. And now I'm going to come back up again. and come up from through the whole lot into again that same point. The principle is you, when you go around a corner you take a stitch on your old side, a stitch on the corner and then a stitch on your new side all through that same hole. And because I've messed about my corner stitch has gone off the corner but do I mind not a jot. Blanket stitch always takes way more thread than you think it's going to take. I'm going to have to get more thread in a minute. It's quite thick because I turn the edges in on my cover on the two sides. Oh, I should have mentioned that. I just turn them over. <clears throat> I just turn them over and I did the invisible basting stitch, which again in the cloth pouch video is what I use when I do my collage thing. So basically you just take a teeny tiny stitch on the right side and a longer stitch on the wrong side. Can you see that? And that just, you know, just to turn the edge under. I could have pinned it and pinned it, but I always prefer to quickly put some stitches in. And then that's one less thing you have to worry about. <clears throat> Invisible based stitch. How far can I make this thread go before I have to give up and get a new bit? Whoops. Not much further because I've now lost my loop. Come on. There you go. It's gone wrong now. It's gone wrong now, you see? I'm going to have to unthread and pull it back. Pull it back. I 
Uh, I'm going to end it off and get a new bit, which is what I should have done <clears throat> in the beginning and not try to carry on with a teeny tiny bit. So to end it off, I'll get that pin away a minute. You just want to anchor that last loop that you trapped. So I just go down just the other side of it. And you see, I'm kind of doing it awkwardly. I'm going to just come through there somewhere. Because I want you to see what I'm doing. There, you see that's trapped that. Now here I'm going to just do a little back stitch. And then I'm going <clears> to <throat> find my scissors which are buried under something. I need a tail. Oops, these scissors really. My grandmother would have said you could ride bare back to London on them scissors. I don't know why to London and I don't know why you go bare back. But it's not really a very nice image. <laughs> I hadn't really thought it thought it through before what, what it kind of meant, but anyway, wish I hadn't said it now. <laughs> I mean not squeamish. <laughs> oh dear, Yorkshire women. Thread my needle with great ease. It's got a bit sticking out. Oh come on. So here we go again. And then if it doesn't go first time, you panic. I wonder how much thread you pull off when you stitch. I always probably pull off more than I should. It's always a juggling act between how often do you have to get new thread, you know, and not off and, and start again. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, if you get too long a bit, what is it going to get all tangly? I usually pull off an arm length-ish. Right, I'm going to come back up behind that loop again, so I can kind of carry on from where I was. And just let my knot be buried in there somewhere, I hope you can see. <coughs> I'm sorry about the throat clearing. Through from the back, capture the loop. Yep, and see, there you go, straight away got a tangle. Too long, too long. from the back. And look on the other side, it looks okay. It looks okay. It's a little bit, you're in the dark as to what's going on on the other side. Which is the good side <coughs> in this sense. Oh, don't lose your voice. That would be a catastrophe. Some would say, others would say it was a blessed relief. thick here and there, this because of the um, layer, because I've got on the other side I've got my backing cloth and at this point everything's double and I've got whatever cloth I collaged on also double and I've got the blanket but we wanted it sturdy so sturdy it is this particular little piece that I'm stitching through now is quite thick. Oh, no, I'm not there yet. No, I thought maybe it was where I doubled joined the new bit. Oh, I know, it's because it's this, it's quite a, I know that cotton. It's not the same cotton that I was complaining about in the Japanese rice bag video. Poor little piece of innocent sheet that I was maligning for being, for having too high a thread count for my taste. <clears throat> but it's something similar. Am I getting my head in your way? Are you having a look at my grey head bobbing about? I'll see later. Oh, now. Come on now. So the, there's this, so this journal what what I'm doing right now at this moment 
And then um, in the introduction to the slow stitch video, I showed some other journals. Um, and I think what I'm going to do, please don't all shout at me. I was thinking when I was looking at them the other day, that there are, there's two journals there that are actually a similar thing. Um, if you know what I'm talking about, if you've watched that video and you remember. There was one that was made with denim offcuts that had in the middle of it a tied in um, signature made of cloth that you could untie and take out to stitch into. On either side of that were paper signatures that were actually bound in permanently. And that was the one that had the, the Japanese borrow inspired stitching on the on the cover and it had the, <laughs> the famous belly band made from the the tie from my husband's trousers in the back with a little snippet pack. I might do a little video at one point showing showing how I made those snippet packs. Something else I could show you. Um, but anyway, there was that one. <clears throat> and then there was the other one with the brown book cover, the old book cover, which had only the three cloth signatures tied in and not the paper signatures um, permanently, you know, bound in. I might have to turn this on its end, I think, if it will behave and stay up. Um, so what I was thinking is I could kind of show you that in one, in one, as one journal. Because if I make the one with the two paper signatures, you know, the, the denim one, the Japanese borrow inspired one, then it's merely missing out a step to turn it into the other one. Does that sound okay? Because it's um, already the third of is it the third of December, and well, there's a couple of other things I wanted to do before Christmas. And um, also, it's no sense really repeating. Oh, sorry, major rock and roll. Um, repeating myself. So I thought that's what I would do. Now I've missed my loop. I'm not concentrating. So there's this journal when it's done. And then there'll be another video which will which you can then choose if that's the kind of journal that you liked the idea of. And you could choose whether you made it with all with cloth signatures that you took out, that you could take out and tie back in, or with a cloth signature and two paper signatures. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. Um, and then the, the fourth journal that I showed you, the more junk journal type one, I think, I think I might leave that to a, for a later date as an extra in the new year. Because I'm going to do more than the weekly stitch along, of course, you know. That's not enough, is it, to just do that? I've got all kinds of plans of other things I want to share. So, so there'll be this journal, there'll be another video of journal, open brackets, close brackets. Um, and I also want to do another very short sort of in preparation video for, I've sewn my tail in now, for um, starting on January the whatever it'll be. Probably the Monday of the new year, I don't know what date that is, I have not looked. I have not done a thing for Christmas yet. Well, that's not true. I do have some things in the freezer. Um, I do a sort of traditional English Christmas dinner type variation. And things are not readily accessible in France, some of the things that we need for that. So I had to think ahead when I was in England, which I think was in August. And bring some things back with me in my suitcase. Um, but anyway, I can't even remember why I started about Christmas dinner. No, yes, I wanted to do a, a, a little, um, a couple of people have asked about what do they need for the stitch along. And then it occurred to me that not everybody has all the stuff that I've got. So maybe it would be nice if you sort of knew in advance a little bit what you'd need, which is very minimal, very minimal supplies. I'm a great believer in not, um, I can't blame the cat, I think that's one of my, um, 
Oh, I'm not a great believer in sending people out to buy loads of stuff. I shall not do that. I shall send you foraging, maybe. Um, but yeah, there'll be very, most of it I'm sure you'll have. So I wanted, oh, miss my loop again. I wanted to do a little video about that, just a little preparation video. So that you can maybe get your little kit together of what you'll need and um, we can start looking forward to it. Something exciting to look forward to in January. Hopefully exciting. I'll keep us stitching through the new year. Now my thread's getting short again. Is it interesting watching me blanket stitch and witter on? <laughs> I hope so. I hope so. Otherwise, you can turn me off or fast forward me. <clears throat> Until I go silent and then you probably think there's something wrong with the microphone because it couldn't possibly be that I've stopped talking. That's really thick there because that's some... Do they still call it a flannelette? Did they ever call it flannelette or was that only us in the north? Brushed cotton, flannelette sheet. Um, I'm going to do one more stitch through that thick bit and then I'm going to end it off again same way as I did before which I'm going to have to do kind of back to front mm, you see what I'm doing I'm going to do it left handed that would be really strange this is where I stab myself and bleed all over my lovely cream blanket. Oh no, it's all right. I did it. Just pull it up so it lays as if it's a finished stitch. Yeah, it's a little bit awkward up here around the around the book, but it's doable. Bury that end in there a bit. Don't put the needle in your mouth. You see, I nearly did it, and then I realised you were watching me. Right. Another length. Mm -hmm. Oh, the lengths we go to. Lick the end. Someone once told me, I must have done that when I was teaching, but someone was disgusted with me licking the end of my thread. I don't know how else you're supposed to do that. I do apologise if somebody doesn't think that's, you know, the done thing. <laughs> I thought everybody did it. I guess it's like licking, I, I, I imagine, I wondered if there was a thing like licking stamps, you know, in the days when you had to lick stamps. I think these days they're all mostly self-adhesive. Um, but in post offices, certainly in England, there used to be little pots with a wet sponge in that you could wipe your stamp across. I wondered if there's something similar for, <laughs> for people that don't want to, to lick the end of their sewing thread when they thread the needle. I don't know. Answers on a postcard or in the comments. Right, on we go. Onwards and upwards. See, my thread's a bit long. My arm has to go way behind me to pull it through. Normally I'd just go to the side but then I'll knock you. Now it's going to get caught around a pin. So I think I'm going to, um, like I said, I've got some other things to show you. Um, do you want to know? Shall I give you some hints? I referred to them briefly, I think, in, I think that was in the introduction to Slow Stitch video as well, because they happened to be in the blue Japanese rice bag that I showed. My stitch meditation scrolls. So I want to show you those. And I might show you those soonish, actually, because, and I'll tell you why, I recently finished a vintage thread thing which I love because this is from Bradford, which is where my Auntie Lily, if you've seen the, the flip through of my Auntie Lily's book, 
my Auntie Lily was from Bradford, or Bradford as they say up there, and this colour is called Heliotrope. Anyway, when I have a free spool like this, you know, when all the thread's gone, it becomes a stitch meditation scroll. So that seemed like a good opportunity to show you those. Um, what else? What else? Uh, oh yes, I ran out of dread beads. I used to have dreadlocks. Um, I had all the beads. All the beads are now on things. And so I have no more beads. And the good thing about dread beads, if you missed it, apart from that they make your dreadlocks look amazing, that would be a matter of opinion, um, <clears throat> is that because they're made to go over a dreadlock, they've got a nice big hole in them. So they're very handy for threading on your cloth twine or, you know, even lengths of strips of fabric to make t ties for book wraps and, and so forth. So because I'd run out of them, I have started making some little beads out of cloth. Um, so when I've made a few more, I'll show you how I'm doing those as well, in case that's something you thought you might like to have a go at. I'd seen a lot of people make paper beads, you know, out of paper. And I saw that and I thought, hmm, I could do that out of cloth. So that's where I got the idea for that. It's probably already a thing. There's probably all people, you know, there's nothing new under the sun, is there? But that was my particular um, aha moment. This is the really, really awkward bit. But it's only a little short length. And I'm getting there. I'm getting there. And it's quite handy that it stands up under its own steam. I could, of course, have not put the cardboard in there. That's not strictly, strictly necessary, I suppose. Um, but I did want to do it, not only because now it stands up while I'm stitching, um, but just to give the spine a bit of structure and also um, so that the pages, you know, in the hope that it doesn't rip the cloth like you saw on that one I showed where the cloth is in danger of coming off. Can you hear that weather? No, the dog's scratching. She's going to the groomers on Thursday. She's a cockapoo. Actually, my daughter's dog, not my dog, but my daughter's at university and she can't have her there, so she's here. Um, she's a cockapoo. They don't shed their hair, um, so she has to be clipped. And although it's winter, if I leave her now until the spring, you will not know which end is which, apart from the tail that never stops wagging. And she sleeps in the in the kitchen with the range going all the time, so, you know. And when she's outside, she runs around like a maniac, so she's not going to get cold. So anyway, I don't know why I'm telling you she has to go to the groomers, but she has to go to the groomers. <laughs> oh dear. It's funny, I don't know if any of you have got dogs that, that have to go to the groomers, but when she's groomed, she looks bigger. Which is strange, because you'd think she'd look smaller. Because you're taking off, you know couple of inches of, of curly, chocolate coloured curly hair, but anyway. So yeah, and that's, I have to go there on Thursday. That was a bit of a trip. It's very lovely to live so rural, but it does just mean that when you need to go to things like that, places like that, then You've got a bit of a journey on your hands. Well, it's not an hour, it's 50 minutes, I think. Something like that. So it's not that bad. And she's quite good in the car, at least, so. Right, I'm past the spine. I don't know if I'm gonna lay it down yet again or not. Um, I'm just noticing here something else to talk about because, you know, heaven forfend that I should run out of things to talk about. My pages, because some of the edges are... I'm going to lay it down, I think. Actually, I'll show you what I mean first. Because some of the edges are torn and some are cut. Do you see the variation in the edges? That's just by chance, you know, just because I decided to tear them and obviously the cut edges were where the sketchbook was. But can you see that? It's just pleasing to me. Just visually pleasing. 
partly torn, partly partly mm -hmm. cut. No, oh, I'm going to keep it on its end. That was handier. Pin away. I'm kicking that thing under the desk again. I know what it is now. I've looked. It's my wooden easel. Because not very often, but every now and then I do a bit of dabbling with the watercolours. And I've got a little tabletop easel thing. And it's 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 small but it's too big to, you know, go in a drawer or anything. So it's propped up against the wall under my desk and that's what I keep kicking. I'm apolo I apologise if it's making an annoying noise. I'll try not to kick it. When I'm contented I jiggle my foot. I've always done that. I don't think I'm the only one in the world that does it. My daughter certainly does it, but she might have got that from me. Do you know, does anybody know what I'm talking about? If you're eating something particularly tasty or, well, like for me now while I'm doing the stitching and talking to you, and my foot goes like this. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know why. I'm not sure I want to know why. Okay, so it's got some deep psychological meaning <laughs> that I'd rather, that I'm blissfully unaware of and want to stay that way. <clears throat> so what I think I'm going to do is get to the end of this here. Um, I think I'm going to carry on around the other side. Do all, do, I basically do all the blanket stitching that I'm going to do and then I shall come back and do the putting the tie on because I think this has already been very long and I don't really want to try your patience and also I can feel my voice starting to go if I'm completely honest and I don't want to lose my voice so um, I should be back in a mo. Okay I have finished all the blanket stitching um, so I've been all around the edges, all around the edges, all the way around, like so. And I also just did a little straight line of stitching there, just to hold these two edges together. And I've left my thread and in and attached, because now <clears throat> I'm going to sew this little piece on. And I've done a little crease where I want it to protrude over the front. Um, so I'm going to line it up somewhat. I'm going to get my needle out of the way. <clears throat> I just took the dogs out as well in between because it's half past four-ish in the afternoon. It was dry. And it's now, I was lucky because it's now absolutely lashing down again. So I timed that well. I timed that well. I put a few pins. And now I want to sew this from the front. I might do two lines of just running stitch, I think into the blanket, not all the way through. So the blanket is very forgiving at being allowing itself to be stitched into rather than, um, you know, going all the way through. So that's what I'm going to do. Somewhat neat dogs barking. That's my big dog, that's not the cockapoo. I've got two dogs. That's my big old dog. He can't get upstairs anymore. So he's probably fed up with being downstairs on his own. After he's had his walk, he thinks, why aren't I down there with him? So I'm just going to, you see, I'm just literally catching the under layer to hold it, but not going through to the back and getting my thread caught around the corner in the process. <clears throat> My pin out. Let's put my pin cushion the other side. So 
So obviously if you choose to make this kind of stitch journal, yours will be different, unique. But I hope that this at least has given you some ideas about the construction and um, the design. My chair's a bit, I feel like I'm sat the other side of the room. I'm going to scooch myself in a bit. <clears throat> Like I said earlier, every one I make is different, so um, it would be difficult for me to give a, a kind of definitive way to make a stitch journal because I don't think I've got two the same. And I think that's nice. Although I use a lot of the same methods every time, you know, the tried and true for me, tried and true, try, tried and true ways that I like to work. Oops. Oh, well, that was silly. Look at that. <laughs> oh, well, I haven't caught the edge. Well, what I'm going to do now, rather than pull it out, is just carry on I'm not catching the edge. And then I'm going to turn around and come back the other way and make sure I catch the edge. Anything rather than unpick. I didn't pull it snugly enough when I pinned it. It happens. Not the end of the world. Maybe I'll do three lines of stitching instead. There are no mistakes, there are only design opportunities. somewhat straight. Hmm. What I'm going to do there because I can't fit in another stitch, I'm going to do a big space and then I'm going to do a back stitch to get myself over for the next line, which will be through into the blanket. And turn it round. <clears throat> I think I might actually just put a couple of pins. And go back this time. I just wanted to use this little piece of cloth and also um, I thought it was a nice little finish to this edge which is kind of the edge of the front cover and when the book's closed it'll be hidden by the, the wrappy bit um, but also to have something on the inside a little bit to break up all the creaminess of the blanket You will be grateful that I didn't do all the blanket stitching live because I think it took me another hour. It is slow stitch after all. I'm just trying to strike a balance between, you know, sharing the process with you and not boring you all to tears by too much of the same thing over and over again. See, it's a bit, I can feel there that the blanket's not inside because of going wonky, but um, it'll be all right. It'll all be all right. And then when I've done this end, I'm going to attach my tie to the other end. And I might, I found a bit of lace, because you know, more is more. <laughs> I might attach the bit of lace to the other end as well. I'll see in a minute once I've, when I offer it up. I don't think this is going to be enough to 
to go back the other way as well. We'll see. <coughs> Excuse me. So my third line is going to be a different distance away because I haven't got room. I haven't got room. Whoops. For example, here, you know, I mean, if I got my stitches in the right place to start with, one line of stitching would have been perfectly adequate. But why do one line if you can do three? And now I'm definitely, it's very nice stitching into blanket. I don't know what it is about it, but I like it. It's very receiving of the stitches. I'm going to have to get new thread, aren't I? I had enough if I'd only done two. But I do like threes of things. Right, what I'm going to do is push that slightly up like that. So I can hide my little back stitch in there. And bury my tail. And get the scissors that aren't really up to the job. <coughs> Excuse me, throwing my arm across to throw my tail in the bin. Where's my thread gone now? If you can, oh there it is, it's hiding. This is different, this is um, also silk but it's thinner than the one I use for the blanket stitch. Licking my thread. Threading my needle. I'm going to pull off a good bit because I need also to sew the sides down inside. So if I can do that all in one, I'll be happy with that. I um, if I even embroidery flosses when 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 the skein starts to collapse, you know, you know if you use embroidery floss, how you hold onto the little cardboard sleeve. Well, they're plastic these days, unfortunately, and then you pull out your. After a while, the skein starts to collapse. I then, I saved lolly sticks for years. I wind onto lolly sticks and any other thread that I've got. And here's my tin, one of my tins, mostly on lolly sticks, which keeps them all organized. And um, I just like the look of them like that, but it does mean it gets kinky. Do you see how it's kinky? <laughs> so, and just do that. Sometimes I even run that through my mouth, but that's maybe, you know, maybe that's not something I should be admitting to. Ooh, that tail's a bit long. I've gone back up where I should be. Somewhere there. I do love frayedness. Some cloth does a lovely fray. This was some sheet. Quite soft old sheet. And it did a lovely fray when I tore it. So I frayed it a bit more for good measure. That's one of the advantages of tearing. I think I've said it before rather than cutting. As you tear across one um, you know, one warp or weft, whichever it is. So you, and then you get a knot. So you get um, a lovely even fray. Cells, so don't bang your tail against the radiator. That's not really what people want to hear. Rather than when you, you know, a cut edge can be a bit jaggedy and not very nice to look at. Some people don't like the sound of tearing. I can remember teaching once in England. Oh, have I said this before? Anyway, I'll say it again. Um, a lady went out because I kept tearing the cloth and she said it's like fingernails on a blackboard. She had to go and stand outside. I had to warn her when I was going to tear and she had to go and stand outside while I did the tearing. <laughs> oh dear. Shouldn't laugh because, you know, there's things that I make me go <coughs> can't think of anything off the top of my head but I'm sure there are things Stells can you stop it oh the cats come in now there'll be wrestling matches going on the cat and the dog wrestle and it's often the cat that starts it the dog will be peacefully sleeping minding her own business 
and the cat will suddenly leap onto her back like a tiger and start biting the scruff of her neck, which she doesn't feel because of all the curly cockapooness of her fur, really. But then she wakes up and they start wrestling. <clears throat> right, and people who don't know go, oh, look, the poor cat, what's the dog doing? I go, no, no, the cat starts it. Don't feel sorry for the cat. Right, so that's my front edge. My front edge. So now I want to open it up. Look at that. Just came out so nice, this little piece. And that's where I went wrong inside, but it's not wrong. So now I'm going to make sure it's pushed right up against the edge. And I'm going to pin. Pin it there. Just for now. Can you two pack it in, please? Just for a moment. People don't want to hear you wrestling. <clears throat> and now I'm going to do the same thing from the other side. I'm going to sew through my pockety eco print loveliness into my blanket. Now, also, I'm just going to check actually. The little frayed edge just pops out, peeks out. Can you see that? Or have I taken it into no man's land? There you go. And I quite like that. So I didn't want to include, I'd thought about maybe including that in the blanket stitch of, you know, here to trap it, but then I thought no, because I don't want to squish all that frayedness. So I'm going to just do the same thing again here. Um, I'm going to come up from the underneath in a bit. <clears throat> Whoops. And stitch a somewhat straight line, but again, only into the woolly woolly blanket. Oops. Naughty corners. Naughty corners. And there's a, what do you call it, laminate floor in this room. And um, little toenails of little cockapoos clip, clip, clipping on the floor. I don't know, I don't think it picks it, it up, but if it does, I hope it's not annoying you. This is their playing time. They've had their well, the cat. The cat does sometimes come for a walk. We're, I'm very lucky. Um, we've got, we own some woodland attached to our house, so I go out of my back door and into our own woods um, with the dogs twice a day, rain or shine. The only time I don't go in there is if there's really high winds, because of you know I don't want trees falling on my head and things. Um, and very often I'm going to come back and do another line of stitching just because I can. Very often um, the cat comes with us. <laughs> so there's me walking along with my two dogs. With the cat following along. And then he gets distracted by something. So he lags behind and I go on with the dogs because the dogs race in front. And then the cat comes yowling along behind us. Shouting, wait for me. Um, and I used to think oh maybe he doesn't come in the woods on his own you know right into the woods and maybe he's frightened by poor little baby and stuff like that and we've got cameras set up because we've got a lot of deer and badgers and foxes in our woods so we've got a couple of those those um cameras that you know uh oh spit it out catherine movement activated so we can look at the wildlife and um Lo and behold, there's the cat right down, right down deep in the valley where the little stream runs. A long way away from the house, in the dead of night, there's the cat going by. So now when he starts crying because I've left him behind, I just say, catch up, silly boy. But it does, because I've got the two dogs, like I said, it does feel a bit like The Incredible Journey. Who remembers the original, not the Disney one where they talk? But the original Incredible Journey, based on the book by, oh dear, what was that lady? It was written by a woman. She, she, I want to say Sheila somebody. 
Sheila, I'll have to look it up. <clears throat> anyway, I've got it. I've got the, the old book. It's just a little thin paperback. The original book. It was a childhood favourite. I'm now wondering whether to just, I think I will, just stitch a line along there as well just to get me to the other side. Shall I? What do you think? Yeah, let's do it. I need the, I don't feel blanket anymore, I might come in a bit. I'm going to come in a bit. And just go along like that. Yeah, The Incredible Journey. What a lovely story. Sobbing like nobody's business I was, well, was, I say was. If I read it now, I probably would also sob like nobody's business at the end. If you've read it and you know what I'm talking about, and like I say, I mean the original. Was it in the 70s, the original film? I'll have to look that up as well. Anyway, I always think of that when I'm walking through the woods with my two dogs and my cat. Anybody else have a cat that goes and walks with them? Or have I just got a weird cat? <laughs> He's called, he's called Fred. I had a, my old cat who died a couple of years ago, a few years ago, 2019, that's, gosh, that's four years ago, time flies. Anyway, he was called Barney. So the people I got him from were called Mr. and Mrs. Barney. So I called the cat Barney. Oh, and I got him as a kitten. So um, when he died and then I got this cat, um, I called him Fred because it goes with Barney. Obviously, Barney Rubble and Fred Flintstone, in case you don't know what I'm wittering on about. But Fred seems not enough of a name for him, so he invariably gets called Fred Fred. Like New York, New York, so good they named him twice. Ow! Oh, that hurt. I stabbed myself. But he's quite a character. He, um, yeah, well, cats, you know, he thinks he's the lord of everything. He rules the dogs with a rod of iron. The big, my big dog, who weighs 45 kilos, he is a breed called a large Munsterlander. He looks like a giant spaniel, black and white. If the cat's laying in his bed, which the cat often does go and lay in the dog's bed because he's quite old and arthritic and he's got a lovely sheepskin blanket in, on his pillow to make him warm and cosy, so the cat goes in there. But anyway, if the cat's in there, the dog doesn't dare um, doesn't dare go in there. <laughs> he just sits there, staring at the cat, going <sighs> like that until someone tells the cat to move. It was quite funny. Not for the dog. Right, so I'm going to stitch out to the edge here and turn around and stitch back in. And this will definitely be a part two, which you'll know by now if you're watching. Um, because I think the first part, up till when I started doing the, the stitching of the cover to the blanket, for people that just want to know how to make the stitch journal and don't want to listen to me wittering on, um, they can just watch part one. And um, I'll put something to that end in the description so that people don't think they have to watch all of this if they don't want to. Because I hope you agree, if you watch part one you can basically make the stitch journal, you don't need, you don't need all this nonsense. But apparently some of you some of you have said that you quite like to just watch me stitching and listen to me wittering on, so give the people what they want. <clears throat> so we'll see. I think I've got enough thread to get to the end, which is a result. It's funny when you make a book because it starts as all these elements and you know you might like your elements which I do I like my stitch piece I was happy with it otherwise I wouldn't have immortalized it as a, a book cover um, I was happy with my papers my tea dive papers 
I like my bit of blanket. But you don't necessarily know that when you put everything together that they'll, you know, that they'll play nicely together. But I must say, ah, oh, you shouldn't, because I'm the one that made it. I'm quite pleased with this. I'm quite pleased right now. I need to hide this somewhere. I'm going to tuck it in there. And finish it off. Stells, can you stop? She's probably got bits of woodland mulch in her hairy Grinch feet. As my daughter said, she had Grinch feet. Grinch, that's a seasonal reference as well, isn't it? <clears throat> anyway, come Thursday, she'll be clipped. And she'll be a shadow of her former self. Right. So let's see how that works as a pocket. I think that's okay. I don't know what you'll put in there or what I'll put in there, but you know, I just wanted something to finish that edge. So that's the front done. I like my pocket. Now I'm going to do the back. <clears throat> Sorry, my frog's come back into my throat again. Um, it's winter and in winter I get I, I'm okay until someone comes home my my husband works away a lot my daughter and son are both at university um, so often I'm alone apart from you know I've got friends and neighbours um, so nobody to infect me <laughs> but then my husband comes home or one of the children comes home and invariably I get a cold even though they don't really seem to Right, so I'm going to find the middle, the easy way, by doing that. There's the middle. I'm going to trap that in between. I'm going to undo that knot. Maybe it would have been sensible to do that before. I'll put a pin. There we go. Because I don't want that big bulky knot in there. Boop. This was some silk noil. Um that had been eco-printed or something had happened to it of that kind and a bit of silk chiffon that had been dyed with yellow onion skins and I've undone it more than I wanted to so I want to try and flatten it out a bit so I can stitch it into there which with the silk chiffon is a bit of a challenge there's not much substance to it <coughs> sorry Oh dear, quirky. Will my voice hold out until I get this stitched in here? Otherwise I'll have to do, what do you call them? Captions. Mm. Uh, now what I need to think about is, if I stitch this, can I stitch it? I've pinned, <laughs> I've pinned it, I've pinned it to the table. When I work on my knee, I'm always pinning things to my skirt, or worse, sewing things to my skirt. Right, there's my bit of thread that I still had. Is that enough? I think so. I think so. It's enough to just sew that on there. Put the pin away again. Sorry, oh, I'm coming across. I'm just going to tack that down in a utilitarian type way because it's going to be hidden Oops. with a few stitches like so and my finger behind so that I don't go right through it because it has to take a bit of strain you know I mean it's not nobody's swinging on it but it's going to get pulled up around the book. We don't want it coming off. Whoops, I felt myself going through to the other side. Not something I want to have. Right, that'll do. That'll do, pig. Cut that off there. Oh, honestly. Worse than useless. 
Right, oh, my other little scissors are downstairs. And in fact, my other little scissors, my little mini Fiskars, are not my scissors. <laughs> well, they are now. Many years ago, and it was many years ago. Um, let me think how many, maybe ten. When I was teaching in person. So you lot can't come and pinch my scissors. <laughs> you can't reach in and grab my scissors. Well, you're welcome to those. Um, anyway, I had my little orange snippy Fiskars. In where I was teaching and when I got home and the next day went to use them they'd suddenly overnight become the bluntest got they gone from being the sharpest little Fisker scissors that ever that there ever were to the bluntest and um, I'm 100% sure I'm just gonna stick my neck out and say I'm 100% sure that somebody did a swap with me I'm not saying it was deliberate it was probably accidental um, but every time I use them now, I remember. I do remember. And then one lady in another workshop where I was complaining about this, well, you know, complaining, mentioning about my little Fiskars, said um, that her husband did sharpening. So she took them from me and he lived, or they lived near the town where I lived and they often came to that town, which was Ilminster in Somerset. Um, so she said, well, let me take them on. That's what the hell they talk in Somerset. Like, let me take them on. I'll take them on and he'll sharpen them and then he'll put them in your letterbox. And he did just that and they were much better. But they were never the same. They were never the same. Anyway, enough of my scissor woes. I'm going to stitch that down with... Am I going to... Now, this was my bit of lace. Do I want to stitch that to there after I've sewn that down? What do you think? I think I do. I think I do. This has been um, eco-dyed with my go-to to make things grungy, which is tannin and iron. So that is basically, I get a pot of rainwater, I chuck some rusty lumps of metal in it, and then I chuck in, chuck. <laughs> I mathematically and carefully and you know expertly place them in it a source of tannin which is can be acorns or oak galls or something like that acorns is the easiest and readily available at least around here and then in that I that mixture I chuck things chuck <laughs> I delicately place things like lovely white vintage lace <laughs> and then it comes out looking like that a very simple way to eco dye, and I don't even heat it up. I just throw it in, th throw it gently, place it in there until such time as I usually go fishing in there for something else and find a bit that's been in there for goodness knows how long. And um, that's what's happened to that. In case you were wondering, simple eco dyeing. And I will get into that at one point next year. It's too... I, I do that outside. Um, obviously I need leaves and I haven't preserved any. I don't really do preserving. You you know, people do and there's nothing wrong with that and I, actually I have done in the past. Um, but now I'm much more into my seasons and um, when the leaves are giving I do eco printing and other times of the year I don't <laughs> basically Right, I'm going to just do a little line of something not too neat, not too fussy, because I'm going to do that lace over the top. I could have done the lace and this all in one go. Sorry, I'm going to move that back over there so I don't keep reaching across you. Um, I don't know why I didn't. I might not use this thread for the lace though, because it's quite a light colour. Don't do that. That's naughty. We're nearly there. We're nearly there. And again, I'm not going all the way through into the very forgiving blanket. I'm just... Well, sorry, no. I am going into the very forgiving blanket. I'm not going all the way through. Whoops. Corners. Um, this little red circle 
you can be looking at that while I'm doing this in case you're bored this that's couched on and couching will be my next um, video called slow stitches you know I've done I think I did running stitch and I've done three haven't I so far I do believe yes I've done running stitch seed stitch and cross stitch it was the one I just posted um, the next one I'm kind of going in the order of um, how much I use them basically and I'll keep doing it until I don't until there are no more stitches that I use but couching things on will be the next one. I'll probably do that this week sometime because I'm all alone all week. Because um, his lordship is working away for the week until Friday. So yeah, I'll talk about couching. That's a nice thing to do. It's nice to do and it's a nice effect as well, I think. So, yeah. And of course I had to do a circle because I'm obsessed with circles. I just noticed there's a pulled thread there, it's a bit annoying, never mind. So I'm nearly to the end and then I have to decide whether I A want that lace on here because I quite, actually quite like this line of stitching now I see it. And um, B, if I do want that lace on here, if I want to use this thread to stitch it on with, or a different one. And firstly, we'll take a view. Let's leave that there for a minute. <clears throat> we'll take a view. Whoops. It's a bit, it's a bit of a weighty, heavy thing, that, but I like it, I want it on there. It's been jangling on my gardening penny for years, so. Mm, see, I think it's a bit plain. <laughs> I guess, how can that be plain? There's barely a square millimeter left unstitched and she says it's plain. I think it needs that, I do. Um, do I want cream on it though? Do I want cream on it? Like it's dessert. Mm, I think the cream's quite nice. Yeah. So we're we going to do this, we're we going to just pick a bit, you see it's not uniformly grunged, it's a big cream patch there, I think I prefer that darker stretch. I'm going to try and cut the lace with the rubbish scissors, there we go. Uh, see now it's a thing, it's, it's nice to make a thing. Like, you know, with the, the bag and the pouch and the, um, what you call the other thing that I did? The, the pin cushion, <laughs> the biscornu. There, I got another chance to say it. It's nice to make a thing, you know? I mean, I make art pieces. I exhibit sometimes in the UK with a group that I'm still a member of. They have me back even though I left the country, it's very good of them. Um, and it's nice to just make things like my stitch meditation scrolls, for example, um, and like the, the weekly project next year, which is very much about the, I can't get my words out, about the, the, about the focus, about the process, not the product, is what I'm trying to say. Um, but sometimes it's nice to make an object, you know. And I've very much enjoyed over these last few weeks making objects. Um, need to come. No, I'm just going to do. Am I going to do one line or two? Mm. I think I'm just going to do one line up the middle. You all heave a sigh of relief. <laughs> Can you see me, or have I done that naughty thing of pulling it too far towards? No, you can still see me. So I have to stand up and peer at the screen on the camera. Whoops. <clears throat> to make sure it's still in shot. And again, into the blanket, not through it. Lovely, lovely blanket. Oh, here we go. <laughs> 
That was going to happen sooner or later, wasn't it? Hello, Fred Fred. You heard me saying he's a character, so he thought he'd come and um, introduce himself. I hope your feet are clean. Walking around on my cream um, cloth I put down to make it look nice for the people. Well, nice-ish, it's a bit... What do you think, Fred Fred? You think it's raining outside, so you've got to be inside. And you're not happy about that. Don't jump up there and see what you can knock off. He likes, I've got a shelf above, up there. A long shelf that runs the nearly the length of the room. And it's got all kinds of bits, books and knickknacks, you know. Interesting shaped rocks and stuff like that on it. Stuff. And he likes to get up on there and push things over the edge. Like shove, um, what's that game where in England they do it with 2p coins? In the amusement arcade and you have to drop a coin in and see if you can get them to fall off the edge and then you then you get them. I'm nearly there Fred Fred. Can you see him or do you? Yeah you can see him. <laughs> you wonder who I'm talking to. No you're not coming on my knee that would not not work at all at the moment. Right, nearly there, nearly there. And we can see how it actually finally looks. Yeah, I do like that bit of lace. I'm glad I put that on. And I'm gonna bury my end. Um, let's bury it somewhere in there. <clears throat> and just squeak into that gap. It won't show. Just come back the other way. I always think that if you're burying ends, if you go, it's, it's like sewing ends in when you're knitting, I think. If you go in opposite directions, it's more secure. That'll do, pig. I don't think sitting there and having a wash is very helpful to anybody, except for maybe you. Can you? Thank you. Right. And... Let's try it out for freshness. Wrap the wrap. And obviously it's a bit, you know, well, it's, it's actually pretty full. I was going to say obviously it's a bit empty because it needs space in it, but who am I kidding? Certainly not you lot. There we go. Quite happy with that. Actually, I quite like that cardboard spine. It just gives it a bit of structure. There's the back to all my stitching. Undo my thing that I just did up. Fred Fred. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Passing through. Go on, go down. And don't now you've made them rock and roll. Um, so and then you open it up. And you've got your pocket. And then we've got our pages of, if you remember, many moons ago. <laughs> There's 26 folios, the folio being the double page that folds into two. So I'm going to put my 52 weekly stitch projects that I do through 2024, um, one per page. And then, like I said, maybe I'll write something there, or I'll see. I don't know yet. To be advised. And so, by this time next year, there'll be... This time next year, there'll be one or two left to do, won't there? So I'll be somewhere up here. I'll have those two pages left. And this will be this big! <laughs> um, I have noticed here and there that you can see little dots of the blue. So what I'm going to do about that, because that's annoying me, is get um, a cotton bud or the corner of a hanky or something and a bit of water and just dab at them to make them go away. That's what I'm gonna, I won't bore you with letting me watch me do that. 
um, but then it's definitely done. So there we go, stitch journal with a cloth stitched cover um, with a cardboard spine and um, a lot of wittering and stitching and stuff in between and around it and there's this end and it's lovely pages and so I hope that you liked that I hope it was useful and informative and enjoyable and I look forward to you joining me next time for I'm oh, just sorry I've just realized my hands are dirty um, that's because I've been in the woods and I didn't wash them I'm so sorry um, anyway um, I look forward to you joining me next time for more cloth tales thank you bye bye